Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. I was in Italy with somebody, a, a friend. We went for a meeting in Milan. And we were just talking. And we we're talking about crisis in Nigeria and Africa and everywhere. And the guy was just explaining some things. He's an American citizen. And he said, if there's a crisis here now, they will just send signals to all of them. They will pick all the American citizens. They don't need to ask for if they are right. And if one of them is left back, the government will do everything to get that person out. They can afford to send a jet. That person don't need to pray. And say, oh, my president, come and save me. No. That's a kingdom that understands rights. And so, so long as that citizen is in danger, America will do everything possible to pull him out. Unless they are not aware that he's there. Now, that is an earthly kingdom. Imagine you now, who has been conferred the right as a citizen of Zion. You are now in problem. You are going to tell somebody to beg God on your behalf. You. That's why I said, if you don't know this, he said you are a babe. You'll find Christians asking, now, this does not negate the place of intercession. When we are interceding, we are actually contending against opposing forces. Are we together? But for a believer not to have assurance that God loves him enough to break everything possible to find him, that somebody else who carries the title of a prophet or an apostle is more beloved to God and he will need to go through that person to see God. It means he doesn't understand righteousness. In fact, in certain aspects of Christianity or fold of Christianity, they pray to saints to pray to God. It's a lack of understanding of righteousness. This is what Jesus said. He said, I will not pray to the Father for you. He said, for the Father loveth thee. He said, you ask of him. And whatever you ask in my name shall be given to you. Jesus himself said, I won't pray to God for you. He said, the same right I have in the courts of heaven, you too have it now. So, when you are talking to God in prayer, if you understand righteousness, it's like a senator arguing a case in the Senate. That's why the church is called Ecclesia. Because this has become a Senate chamber in the spirit. Everybody who is here has a legal right to be here. Everybody who participates in God's presence by the privilege of God's love, has been given the right to operate from there. And so, the believer now becomes a creature of authority. He's not trying to get authority. He's a being of authority. Because when that royal decree was made, his status changed. But when people don't know this, their life will be begging. Even what they need to eat, they beg for. And they are begging God for food. No. Jesus said, every time you have a need, command it. The time of begging is over. You have become a citizen. You have been declared right with God. So he said, if you see this mountain, don't talk to God about it. Say mountain, in the name of Jesus, get out. The reason you will doubt is because you don't know your right. And so the first thing righteousness confesses upon you is citizenship. So the presence of God for you is no longer a privilege you access. It's now a right. And that right, you didn't earn it. It was given to you. That's why you thank God for it. And we together. The second thing righteousness brings into you is the fact that you have now become a creature of power. You don't have power. You are a creature of power. And I'll tell you why. Righteousness is not right living. I told you when you are righteous, you will live right. But righteousness is not right living. Righteousness is actually the nature of God that makes God always right. And that nature is not because God is accurate. It's actually because God is powerful. God is not only right because he's accurate. God is actually right because he's powerful. Let me explain to you. If God were to be right because he's accurate, if he says you are fair, it's because your skin is fair. That righteousness will not be based on accuracy. But God's righteousness is deeper than accuracy. If God looks at you and says you are fair, even if you were black, as he's saying it, you become fair. That's why God cannot lie. It's not possible for God to lie, not just because God is accurate. Anything God says become. He said there was darkness upon the face of the deep. God said light be, light came. It, you don't know where it comes from, it must be. If God looks at you and says, you are healed. And that's why if you notice, in scripture, many things are said in past tense. Whether you were blind, the moment that word is spoken, you become healed. So righteousness, therefore, is a power. It's a power that makes everything to become what he said. And so when that royal decree was made concerning you, you became an agent and an agency of power. Now, when you find believers who feel they don't have power, 
is because they don't have understanding of righteousness. Because when God declared you righteous, God brought you to that is realm that makes you right. The reason you are able to approach God's realm is because now you are right before God. And if you are right before God, it means what you say will have to align to what God says. So righteousness makes you become a power being. You find Christians who are audacious. It's not because they are praying more than everybody. Yes, they pray. But there is an understanding they bring into prayer. When God called you righteous, God released you into his power realm. Because it is power that made God righteous. That's why God cannot lie. Anything God says becomes. And if God brings you to that realm, then you now can operate in that realm. So the doctrine of righteousness is beyond biblical exegesis to find accuracy. It's actually a reality that can impact both on you and your environment. If you know you are righteous, then you become a righteous agent. You can change anything around you because now that you are declared righteous, it means you conform to God's standard. And you can now bring everything to align to God's standard. These two simple and basic realities are the foundations of true spiritual authority. That a man knows he carries God's presence everywhere and that a man knows he's an agent of establishing God's standard. Not because he's anything, but because it was declared so. See, when we say we cannot fail, it's not pride. It's because we were declared righteous. If it was failing and we touch it, it will work. Because we will make it right. Anything wrong, we make right. Because we have been declared righteous. So when we even talk about right living, right living is not living above fornication only. That is myopic understanding. Because when you are talking righteousness and you are talking right living as a byproduct of righteousness, somebody is now thinking is sinlessness. The scope of right living is bigger than sinlessness. Right living is to make wrong right. And so if a business is not going well, you have the power to make it right. That is also right living. Anything you touch, he said, whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. That means you are an agent of alignment. You cause everything to conform to God's standard. Healing is part of right living. When the body is sick, the body is not working right. And so a man who understands righteousness, when he shows up, he makes the body right. When somebody is walking in sin, it means he's not living right. When you show up, you make him right. If a circumstance is not going the way God said, if you show up as a righteous being, you make that circumstance right. So righteousness being God's nature and a royal decree does not just make you live above sin. It actually makes you cause everything to become like what God said it is. So when Adam was commanding things and they were being in the garden, Adam was exercising righteousness. You don't only exercise righteousness by living above sin. You actually exercise righteousness by changing earth to heaven. You exercise righteousness by causing things to become like God said they should be. That is the power that righteousness confesses on you. And that's why righteousness is a power. Because that is how God operates. He said, God, he calleth those things that be not as though they were. So if you are asking why is God righteous, that is the verse. Romans 4, 17. He calleth those things that be not as though they were. If you know you are righteous now, you won't call anything what the world call it. If the world said they are failing, don't join them. He said, why men are cast down? Because that's how it is from the world. He said, but you will say, because the only things you are permitted to say is the way God says them. That's righteousness. How do you talk to a deaf person? They say somebody is deaf. The first thing you should do is he not sign. So why are you now talking to a deaf person? They actually said he's deaf. That means he can't hear you. But when you want to deal with a deaf person, you say ear open. That means even the deaf ear can hear if a righteous man is talking. That's why he said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth not. If a righteous man is not praying, there will be no answer. Because a righteous man, first of all, calls it what God calls it. And so when he's praying, he's changing it to what God says it is. But see our problem. Unrighteous men are praying. How can you change things? How can you change things? You change things because that's your reality. So it is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that availeth much. Because the righteous man is a change agent. He calls those things that be not as though they were. He changes it to what God says it is. And if he says it, it must happen. Because when he was declared righteous, power was released. Righteousness is power. Do you see why you have to be careful what you say and what you think? They tell you the business is not working, not my own. The ministry will fail, not mine. No, I don't know what you are talking about. 
because where we come from what you think and say is what you see and so we are careful what we think and we are careful what we say because we are righteous anything we say becomes the first major gift god gave us is righteousness because righteousness make us to function as the god kind what we say is what becomes and so you may not have gift of healing but if you know you are righteous you can command the sick to be well and it will become the second gift god gave us is eternal life so that we can operate in his class and the third gift he gave us is the holy ghost so that we can know his ways and have intimacy with him the three major gifts every believer has is righteousness eternal life and the holy spirit and righteousness is a power it's a power what you call it is what it become i heard a story told by reverend umar why some kidnappers arrested him and they were interrogating him and he won't answer so they now get, put poison brought acid and some things poured in the cup and told him to drink he carried it he said well thank you father because this is tea and drank it <laughs> that is understanding of righteousness what you call it you know we reduce righteousness to right living i'm no longer fornicating i'm no longer lying you don't know the doctrine the doctrine is not living above sin sin is one of it the doctrine is actually anything you say is what it is because you you make things aligned to god's standard he said this is tea and drank it when they watched one hour two hours three hours the man won't die they started begging you now said no wait this is my turn I, I won't go i won't go i will leave when i want but for now knee down <laughs> now for now knee down first let's talk knee down knee down let me understand so that we know who is supposed to sit down all of us were sitting before see this is what distinguishes the christian all of us can sit together in the office they say are we not the same until a play comes when the play comes you now tell yourself this is not for our evil this is for our good for all things work it together for them that love him according according to his purpose this one who pull us down we change things by talking ah as i am like this it won't happen it can't happen but if you found me on the sick bed, I won't change what I'm saying. And it's not because I'm saying it for something to happen. I'll be saying it because this is the only thing I believe. I'm too audacious about this. That if you told me, at, at wisdom guides some of us. Because this revelation almost makes us reckless. If you tell me it's dangerous, that's the time I should go. Ordinary men can wait, but it's when it's tough that we go. I look for what is tough to do it. When I was going to Pakistan, hey! We went to the embassy. Embassy was dry. They didn't know the last time somebody came. Go and check Pakistani embassy here. The gate is locked. Because people don't come again. They say apply online. Hey! When I landed Dubai and was supposed to take off to Pakistan, I was the only person that was black. Ah. Are you the only black man here? Where are you going to? Everybody was looking at me. What is he? Where is he going to? What is he going to do? I said, this makes it better. This makes it better. Because he said, Paul and Barnabas. He said, this be the men that hazarded their lives for the gospel. They know this thing. They are intoxicated. When they say it will not work, that's when we come. We are looking for the one that will not work. Because it's when we make it work that it will be a testimony. I'm not looking for the easy way out. I'm looking for the way of faith. Because even if it is hard, the way of faith makes it easy. Your life is about to change. Because everything the devil was doing, you're about to go back and say, what did you call that? Did you call it cancer? No, that's not the name. The name is actually relaxation syndrome. And it will change. That's how we live. It's called righteousness. Both you and everything about you functioning by God's standard. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Because when you notice, you begin to believe. You will stop seeing things how men see them. You will stop calling things the way the world calls them. You will now start calling things as heaven calls them. Because the way you call them is the way they become. I decree over you now. You will function in the full weight of righteousness. See, if you know this, your life will change. Even when you are praying, your prayer will be audacious. You need to see a righteous man praying. You will now understand why James 5.15 says, The effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A man who doesn't know righteousness when he's praying, he say, oh God, please make this crusade successful. Oh God, deliver us from the devil. Oh God, help us to succeed. Well done. You have done well. The mercy of God will accommodate you.
but when the righteous man is praying father we thank you because the crusade is a success father we thank you because we are taking over father we thank you because we are mightily helped father we thank you because we have overcome father we thank you because we are shining we are taking over we are ruling that's a righteous man praying that is the prayer that availeth much if you don't know you are righteous you can't pray like that when two people are praying their result is a product of their revelation you find christians manipulating i was talking to the, a friend the other day they said the pastors are lobbying to be posted to cities ah, ah. you enjoy it more when it's a village if this is a village at least you will find three crutches here everybody is wearing suit how can you manifest power january to december they say power people are falling down it's when you go to the village you start counting deaf ears you start counting blind eyes you start counting cripples it's the village that glory shines how can you be lobbying lobby for what anywhere you take me as the wind blow it as the wind blow it and thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goeth so are they that are born by the spirit of god take me to the water line area i will manifest take me to the village i will manifest take me to the city i will manifest because i am righteous i'm a change agent my god ah! refuse to be intimidated tell the devil throw your best shot because what you think for evil will turn for my good it's our work to turn things for good that's our job that's why we look for the sick that's why we look for dark territories because we know when we were declared righteous a power was released ay 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 do you see why you cannot be cursed how can you curse me do they curse a spirit they say him that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him i don't need to pray about it curse me that means you don't know the gospel it, see when it came to us he said you are fearfully and wonderfully made he said i and the children that the lord has given to me we are for signs and we are for wonders when you start releasing curses to me you are about to make me shine because it's in darkness the light shine if you think you want to frustrate me you are about to make me shine because when you make it tougher the glory becomes stronger if it is easy we may sleep but when you make it tough that's when we will tell you weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning our light affliction and but for the moment they walk it for us and it's in the weight of glory why we look not at the things which are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen they are temporal the things that are unseen they are eternal Sometimes when I'm praying in my room, I get charged. Because see, when, when you start praying, you know what happens? These scriptures begin to come into you. They begin to come. They begin to come. It charges you until you start prophesying. You will say some things. It's when you finish, you will wonder. I said it, but it will happen. declare a verdict over you the bible said who is it that they created him and it come to pass when the lord commanded it not because god has already commanded he said you are righteous he finishes it they say who can bring any charge against god's elect it is god that justifies 
Oh my God. Wisdom, you are more than a conqueror. Take over, brothers. When they look at you and say you are small, laugh. Because they assume that you are small. That's why they are about to be surprised. Because the things you do don't look like your size. I was telling them in House on the Rock, even the doctor has no power to give me a verdict. He studies your blood and says you will die. No, I don't live by blood alone. There are three lives in me. There is the bios, there is the suke, and there is the zoe. You study bios and you are talking. Do you know me? I operate in the God class and in the angelic class. I also operate in the men class. I also operate in the animal class. I can choose the realm I function part time. If you judge me based on men's standard, I will change gear and enter the hey! God standard. And then you who saw me a moment ago and thought I was finished, you will repent that you said so. Everybody looking forward to your downfall, they will watch you rise. Everybody thinking you have no future, they will see glory come out of you. Because only what is compelled to God is good enough for you. For as He is, so are you in this world. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Emit something. Emit some glory. Emit. Emit some glory. There's something in you. There's something. There's something. You are the righteousness of God. That's who you are. If it is not good enough for God, it's not good enough for you. It's only good enough for you if it is good enough for God. Somebody shout glory! Glory! If you are not righteous, how will you manifest God? You can't manifest what you don't have. He said in First Peter 2 9, he said, But you, I don't know about others. He said, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Do, do you see why we can't be careless? When I walk, I walk like a king. You don't find me threatening. No, you are a royal priesthood. There's something about your demeanor that manifests God. There's something about you. When you stand, square your shoulders. Don't stand like a defeated person. No, you are not. You are called into glory. You start to manifest the excellencies of God. The virtues of His Spirit. You are not ordinary. You are not. There may be no money in your pocket, but you are bigger than money. Money doesn't define you. Even that money will come with time. But while money is yet coming, your reality is being manifested. How can somebody look at you in the office and say you are finished? Who are you? Do you know me? Do you know where I come from? Do you know the backings that I have? I can call men and intercessors will go to work. I can call angels and angels will work. Do you know me? Ah! Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.